Hello and welcome to episode 12 of Fun with Robotics. And as promised last week, um, I will show you this week a storage card of unique design. In the robotics projects that I do, I use a fair amount of different types and gauges of wire. And I've always struggled with a way to organize and store all those different wires and make it easy for me when I'm trying to work on a project to get the, the right gauge and type of wire that I need. I looked on the internet and I looked on YouTube and I really couldn't find someone that has come up with a really good solution to this problem. So I decided I'd make my own design and build it and see how that works. So this week I'm going to show you how I now store and organize all of my wire and wire spools for my robotics projects. So let's go have a look. Here is the wire organization cart that I built. And bear with me for a moment. I'm going to definitely have to bring the camera in closer so you can understand how this actually works. But let me give you an overall view of um, how it's set up and then I'll bring the camera in and show you some of the details. I'm going to start at the bottom basically because, well, wire is expensive. Uh, it's really tough to buy wire, almost any kind of wire, for less than a dollar a foot. So if you have extra pieces that are, you know, at least uh, a foot long, it's good to save them uh, because sometimes that's all you need is one piece of one foot of wire to, to do the job. So why pull it off of a brand new spool if you've got one that's perfectly good just laying around? So down at the bottom here, um, I have a number of storage bins for different types of wire cutoff pieces that I have. Over here, without getting too much into the weeds of uh, breaking down the individual wires into actual uh, wire gauges, I have single conductor stranded wire in this column here of sizes large, medium, and small. And so, you know, if I need a single stranded, uh, a single conductor stranded wire of whatever size, I would just pull out that bin, sort through it, see if I can find what I need. If not, I'll go to some of the other spools and, and cut off what I need. And then in the middle here, I have um, double conductor stranded wire, again, of large, medium, and small gauge. So it's just rough, roughly estimated in, in the gauge size, but this is a you know, dual, dual conductor here. So obviously just you know, red and a black is a common uh, dual conductor. And then over here, um, this is a little bit less organized. I just have um, solid wire here. It's not really sized. It's medium, small, and large um, in there, and then these, these two bins are multi-conductor wire, meaning more than two. So sometimes I've got cables that have uh, four wires in them, or five, or even six. They're stored in, in these. So um, that's pretty much how this, this bottom section is stored. The top sections here are wires that come off a spool. So I'll open this up here, you can see I've got uh, a number of spools there. And they're just set in a, um, I'm going to call it a tube that I built. And um, I looked around for different size PVC pipe that I could use to make these tubes to store the spools of wire. But unfortunately, the standard sizes that the spools come in just didn't match or were not a good match for the standard sizes of PVC pipe. So I kind of had to make my own out of wood. The only size I did find was, um, I think this is a, looks like a two and a half inch spool here. That actually did work out to very close to a standard size for a PVC pipe. So I've got uh, two PVC pipe tubes here that I've used. All the rest of the spools, I had to actually build my own tubes because I couldn't find uh, the right sizes. So let me, let me bring the camera in closer so I can show you how these... Um, oh, and before I, before I do that, 
There are, on the front here, they're not mounted yet, but I've got a front panel here, 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 and here. Um, I'll show you them in a minute. They're over there on my workbench. I'm putting a, uh, several coats of polyurethane on them so that I get a good surface to put the uh, Brother P-Touch label so I can label all the different types of wires that are coming out of the front. So that should, uh, that worked out really well for the sandpaper cart and uh, it should work out again uh, for, for this cart as well. Um, so yeah, they get mounted right on the front here. And what happens is when it gets mounted here, there's a little clip that uh, clips onto the front of, the, uh, of the, the front plate. And if you're pulling on a wire here, um, it won't pull out the drawer. It keeps it basically in place. Because, you know, when you're trying to pull out part of the wire, you've got a little bit of friction. So if you don't have that front plate on there with the clip, it'll just pull the drawer out. So, um, yeah, let me bring the camera in closer and I'll, I'll show you what's going on here. So this bottom drawer stores six and a half inch wire spools. And basically it, it pulls out so that you can remove a spool. So it opens up and you just pull it out and then put a new one back in. In all of the designs that I've seen on either YouTube or the internet, what people do is they, they put a, a tube or a pipe through all the spools and then they just kind of hang there and then you can pull wire off um, as much as you need. Problem is with these spools is the wire tends to unwrap and it gets, uh, it gets a little bit nested um, and it, it just gets a little bit messy. Plus if you if the center spool runs out and you got to replace it you've got to take all the other ones off and then put your new one back on or move the other ones in further if you don't want them in a specific order and then you know hang the hang the whole rack back up again. This way all you have to do is you know you open up the top you pull out your spool put a new one in and feed it through and you're ready to go. Now the idea of this top is to basically just come down and, and sit slightly on the top and give a little bit of friction so that when you're pulling wire out you you have a little bit of friction you cut it off and it doesn't go back in it doesn't tend to mess up the spool so it always tends to stay nice and neat now some of these aren't that neat because they haven't um, they've been laying around and they haven't been in a rack like this before. But if you put it in um, from the beginning, uh, it should keep your wire nice and neat. So you just basically put it in there and then it pull out as much as you need and then close this down and it won't, it won't allow the wire to uh, pull back in and, and unwrap from the spool. So that's the six and a half inch uh, spools. Then I have um, the next size up, which I don't have that many spools. And I don't, um, let me check the size of this. These are five inch, these are five inch spools. But the idea is the same. You can just pull the drawer out, put a spool in, feed it through, close it push it in and then clip the clip to the front which isn't here right now I'll show you them in a minute and then you can just you pull the wire whatever you need sorry I had to reposition the camera because it was uh, not catching this this next shelf up but basically this shelf is the the tubes are made from PVC pipe and they basically just happen to be about the right size for this size spool um, it's a little bit bigger than it should be, but it does, with these smaller spools, it, it seems to work out okay anyway. If I need to, and I'm, I'm still doing a little testing on this, if I need to, I can put maybe a little strip of wood on the top so that when it comes down, it puts a little bit of friction on these so that uh, you know, when you pull, pull the spool, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't back up. So, and then behind it, I've got a second one for more spools 
just more storage space. I don't have anything in there at the moment. And then on the top, I also have dual tubes. These are for um, more or smaller spools of wire. Um, and these are a little tough. I mean, some of them work really nicely. The thinner wires work really nice, but these thicker wires are, are a little tough. It's, um, it's, it's kind of hard to pull. It works. Um, it's just a little bit stiff. Um, but still, I think it, it does the job that it was designed to do. And so I had to, um, I had to make these out of wood. There was a lot of, um, of trial and error just to get these pieces the right size to, to fit the, the uh, spools. So this isn't really a, a one weekend project. It's more like a, a two or a three weekend project. Uh, at least for me it wasn't because I, I was doing a lot of trial and error to get the, the width of these boards and the angles just right. Plus there's a lot of gluing up that needs to happen. Uh, you can't just glue it all at once. You've got to glue like three pieces together and then another three pieces together and then more three pieces together and then add one. Uh, yeah, you can't just glue them all up in a, in a row and, you know, only uh, spend a couple hours gluing. You got to kind of do it in sequence um, and it takes a lot of time. So I spent evenings, I'd come out, I'd, I'd set up the, the gluing of maybe two of them and then come the next morning and then do a couple more and a couple more and then eventually they were all done. But um, yeah, it, it did take a little bit of time to, to do all the glue ups for these. So uh, let me just show you what I have over here on, on my workbench for uh, the, the front plates that go on here and then you'll see how it, it basically gives a place to uh, label all these different wires. Here are the, the front plates that will go on to the front of the storage cart. You can see it's nothing more than a board with some, some holes in them. And that's where the, the wire will stick out. And once I've got uh, several coats of urethane on here, I'll be able to label these with the Brother P-Touch label maker and uh, label the, uh, the size or gauge of the wire that's, that's in that particular spot. Um, on this particular one, I have mounted the, um, the little clip here that will hold, hold the drawer in place when you're pulling on a wire. It won't allow that drawer to, to move forward. So um, I'm still looking for these. I seem to have lost my, my set of these uh, to put on these other front drawers. So kind of kind of lost them. I'm not sure what happened to them. Uh, but they'll show up eventually. Here is the finished uh, wire cart. And I now have the front drawer panels mounted on it. Um, these are the front panels that I put four coats of polyurethane on so that I could uh, put all of the Brother P-Touch labels for all the different wires. And that obviously it worked out pretty well because it worked out uh, really well on the uh, sandpaper cart and so it worked out well here. I also did manage to find the little clips on the side for um, to keep the drawers tight against the, the cart. I was a little bit uh, too organized for my own good. I found them in a, a little storage bin that I had, I had put with some small parts. So uh, yeah, I found them and I, I mounted them on the, on the sides here. So now you know, if you pull the drawer, it's, it's not going to pull out. Um, and if you want it to come out, just flip open these little things here and then it'll, then it'll slide out. And then you put it back, put the clips on. Yeah. Let's see here. There you go. And then you can pull the wires out as you need it. And if I end up buying some more wire spools and they don't fit any of these sizes, hopefully that's not going to happen. But I do have a little bit of room to grow here. Uh, I can put probably one more shelf here. Um, when I built this, originally I built it only this tall. This is four feet. And uh, for this last drawer on the top, I needed to extend it up uh, about another foot. So I put another foot on top. If I were going to build it from scratch, obviously I'd probably just make these side pieces all one. And the same is true with the back. I mean, if you're going to build something like this, you might as well just build it all in one piece and not have to, to patch it together like I did. But uh, this is fine. It works. It's, uh, it's not a problem. 
So let me bring the camera in a little closer and I'll just give you a quick um, uh, close-up view of these labels and the little clips on the side and I think that wraps it up. So I think you can you can see pretty uh, pretty well how these work. They're just a little clip that go on it goes on here. When you open it up, it allows the drawer to slide out. And then when you're ready to when your all your wire is in place, put that clip on and then you can pull any of the wires and it will pull the drawer out. And these uh, these labels, this nice smooth surface here, these Brother P Touch labels, they stick really nicely to that. And even in this humidity, it doesn't seem to be a problem. So that wraps it up for episode 12 of Fun with Robotics. I hope you enjoyed the video. And next week I have one more cart of a unique design that I'll be showing you. And then after that, there really won't be any more carts for a while. I do have uh, two more cart designs on the drawing board that I want to get to, but um, they're not critical at the moment, so I'm going to let them sit for a while and let the design sort of ruminate, um, maybe come up with some new features for it before I actually start building it. And as usual, um, if you have any questions, you can send an email to info at theroboticscodedepot.com. And you can always check out the website, theroboticscodedepot.com, because I'm still posting lots of cool stuff there as well. So I think that'll do it. See you next time.